Ian, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, again, just trying to get to know my neighbors. Uh, and I start at the beginning. Yeah. So tell me about where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in uh, Redding, California. But uh, I was raised back and forth between here and there. Uh, you know, uh, kind of weird. You know, I, I had a pretty, well, really good upbringing, but I got bad cases like the bad kid. You know I mean, I got in a lot of trouble as a kid. I was locked up a lot. Followed me into adulthood. And pretty much, we was locked up from the time I was like 12 until about 40. <laughs> that was a long time. Well, yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, you said you're a bad kid. Yeah. That's a, that's a term that's pretty loose. I yeah, mean, you know, some people, people say, you know, there's no such thing as a bad kid. That's, that's a lie. You know, I mean, I, I was... Your self-admitted bad kid is no, what you're telling me? No, I mean, my, my parents were great parents. You know what I mean? My, they, they, the state actually stepped in and told my parents, like, thanks for trying and they played a good game and all that, but we're going to go ahead and <laughs> put him someplace where we can control him a little bit better. Wow. You know, I just... I don't know. It was it was a weird thing, you know. And my parents, you know, they they, they paid a lot of money. My, my dad was the head of the radar lab at Boeing, so I mean, he made fairly decent money. Well, when I was a kid, he hadn't worked up to that level of gotcha, whatever gotcha. yet. Yeah, but yeah, sure, it, sure. when my sister, who was five years younger than me, when, by the time she hit, you know, uh, teen years, you know, she had got the the luxuries of the 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 working better parent. You know the what I mean? Fruits of the labor. Yeah. So. So, well, you have one younger sister? Yeah, young, one younger sister. Um, like I said, I, I grew up here at Ballard. Uh, oh, you did, yeah. My mom got in a car accident here in like 1981, actually. Uh, I, by Ballard High School, used to a restaurant called Zesto's uh -huh. over there, and there was a, she had a utility pole in front of there doing uh, 80 miles an hour. And uh, like, luckily there happened to be an ambulance there and saw her wreck and like scooped her out of the car pretty much and, and took her to Harborview. And uh, she died three times on the way to Harborview. That's, that's a pretty short ride, you know what I mean, from here to Harborview. And uh, she got there, the trauma doctors had the ER ready and like massaged her heart by hand and got her heart beating. Um, and then uh, fucking, they got her stabilized, I, I guess as best they could. And then they told my family, they, my dad, that you know she, the best thing to do, the humane thing to do, would be to you know take her off life support because if she did survive, that she'd be either a complete vegetable or severely blind and retarded from the head injury. Right. Uh, and so I, I didn't know what was going on. I was only six years old. My dad had dropped me off at my aunt and uncle's, you know, uh, uh, and uh, everybody went up there and uh, they, they told my dad, you know, they went in groups of three and, and said goodbye, their, their their peace to my mom or whatever and. Her older sister apparently was like, pull your bootstraps up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you got kids, like, you ain't doing this shit. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, and they took her out the, the monitor, the, the uh, respirators or whatever they do, you know, during that thing. And uh, she flatlined for like two minutes or so, they said. And then all of a sudden, when they were all getting ready to leave, her heart started beating, she made a full recovery. They don't know how, like, no, no brain, Injured, no, uh, uh, any type of, uh, you know, mental uh, instability, any, anything, no, no uh, she had a paralyzed lung so from it all. Mo your, your, your mom made a, pretty much almost a full recovery? Made a complete recovery, they yeah. took her off the ventilator yeah. and were like, said goodbyes and everything? Yep. That is nuts. Yeah, yeah, so they they had her on talk shows about it and, and okay. like Phil yeah. Donahue and Donahue. Like Northwest <laughs> Afternoon and all that yeah. crazy stuff and... Yeah, it was, you know, I mean, you know, it was weird, and, you know, she, it, it, it affected my life quite a bit, you know what I mean? At an early age, you know, like, experiencing something like that, you know, I, I got kind of, like, uh, didn't want to leave my mom a lot, you know what sure. I mean? Because, you know, the whole, like, I was afraid. Yeah, 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 almost like, I got a dog right now, and I try and leave that dog, and she's just like, Rah! so I get it, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. the whole, uh, 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 anxiety you know I mean yeah. when I was a kid so I mean I think that might have a lot to do with me acting out you know what I mean and well yeah I mean when you're a kid you don't know you feel it yeah. and you cannot articulate that right and right. something you, you use the word act out that's why I say bad kid it's right like, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. There's, there's more to it there's so much I, I, had, I had a real problem with authority <laughs> yeah and and but then who does it really I guess you know <laughs> yeah especially when you're a kid yeah right going yeah. to you know 12 13 going into puberty it's like 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Like uh, that correlation there of authority, doctors, even them saying, "Hey, say, say goodbye." Like they made these calls. Right. Like this authority, this authority people. Right. 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 And for that to turn around and to go like, oh, they made the wrong call. Right. And psychologically, how that affects you, I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, I wonder if there's a connection there. Yeah, there could be. I mean, I never really thought about that. Yeah, that 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 that, that does. That actually, that's quite. I don't know. Really, I'm just saying, like. Yeah, that, that, that is quite a correlation, <laughs> actually. Yeah, no, I, I never really thought about that, but that's. Yeah, you know what? That is a. Like on a deeper subliminal, like like on a subconscious type level. Yeah, that's you know what, what I mean. mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, it's yeah. like absolutely that stuff seeps in your bones, you know. Uh, oh, it does. It does more than we could ever imagine. You know right. what I mean? That's right. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Um, well, tell me, you know, when you were twelve, you said you went into or. Yeah, I started getting locked up. Uh, I, I I pulled a knife on a kid in junior high. You know, I thought I was Pony Boy Curtis from The Outsiders or some shit, and fucking. <laughs> How old are you? We're, we're uh, I'm almost 50. Yeah, we're, uh, I'm 48, so I was yeah, like, 48. Oh, I know, I yeah. know the Outsiders. Born in 75, yeah. yeah me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, pony boy, that's right. Yeah, man, yeah. So I, yeah, I was bound and determined to pull the knife on somebody that day. I bought a switchblade up a guy the day before and fucking, yeah, it was stupid. I was just stupid. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we all have those stories. Like, yeah, just oh, yeah. Like, why did I do that? And you don't, you have no idea why. Right. When you're yeah. It's, Twelve it's, it's, or thirteen. Exactly. There's there's no explanation for that. Stealing this from it. there, you're just like, what am I? You're just being a kid, exploring. Well, whatever. that's just it. You know, and I look at that now, and, and and that's what I say. But back then, it was like medicate him. You know what I mean? Like he's obviously there. And nowadays, I don't know if it's much better because now the kids are just freaking so lazy. They just play around, play video games. They don't ever go outside. Yeah. Anymore. Well, they're like. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, when I was a kid, no, you couldn't get me out of the rain in the house of a bicycle. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. With my dog outside doing something. I mean, play outside, make yeah, make yeah, all yeah, that. all that stuff. Nowadays, it's like you got to pretty much maybe, so. chase them outside with a freaking stun gun or something. You know, it's like. So you you were in high school. You went to high school. Uh, I so I was locked up most of my high school years. I was in like uh, reform schools. Um, I got out. Like I said, I, I really, um, you know, I got uh, well. Pretty much, I, I went to California. I met some people and to Reading. Yeah, uh, and got involved in the in the meth thing really okay. big, and came up here. And I got busted coming out of Granite Falls in '95 with 12 and a half pounds of meth. I was in Rolling Stone magazine and said Granite Falls, Washington, meth capital, USA. Oh yeah, can, and that's still that's still uh, kind of <laughs> yeah like mindset, I think. Yeah, so I got busted with that, and then so of course they, you know, at that time it was the big, you know, clandestine meth lab thing that they were trying to villainize and everything, which rightly they should have, you know. What I mean, it was like not like you know, but uh, I fucking got caught up in that, so I got ten years up here. Oh wow! Then got extradited to California, and uh, I had some charges pending down there, and they their enhancement laws down there. I thought I was going to get four years and do two with halftime and go to camp, and I ended up with 13 years at 80 percent because of their enhancement laws for a crime that I did that I wasn't even in there for a strike of below offense on that crime but because I had one in my past in another state they could use that against me as an enhancement and it doubled my sentence and okay. gave me 80% and then a year for every prior prison enhancement so I ended up with like 13 years at 80% Dude. for a bad check yeah <laughs> you know tell, what I mean tell, so, <laughs> yeah right it's stacked on top of you yeah it was just the yeah it was incredible uh, you know, so. tell me about prison man I'm so curious like you spent it's, a lot of time it's you know, California is a lot different than up here, you know. Okay. And unfortunately, I was on level four yards the whole time I was down there because I've got a long escape history. Um, is, is level four like tight? Level four is locked or down. That's locked like down. You know, okay, there you go. 180 design. Uh, uh, you're under the gun pretty much all the time. But you know, I saw a lot of killings. I mean, like my second day on the yard down there, I saw a guy get disemboweled, like sitting right next to me. I mean, literally holding his stomach and like slipping on his intestines and trying to like you know like dead but didn't even realize he was dead type of shit you know what I mean and uh I mean that's just something that you never for the, the smell yeah. for one thing I mean it just it, you can't you, unsee that or yeah un it's, 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 like it's, that's, yeah you know what I mean I, I still have a hard time sleeping out here you know what I mean because just you know you see a lot of bad shit when you close your eyes you know what I mean it's a lot of stuff that you know like my mom when I first came home I fight a lot in my sleep, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, it's, it's hard, you know. I, I, my girlfriend doesn't have, sleep with me a lot because I 
you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, it, it, I don't know. It's, a, it's one of those things where it's like, I wouldn't change who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I can look myself in the mirror and hold my head high. You know, I'm not a bad person. I don't steal from people. I don't, you know, hurt people unjustly. You know what I mean? They got it coming. I mean, you know, I'm kind of that guy, but. <laughs> well, let's see, you said uh, you were in prison until you're 40. Yeah. So I was like almost 10 years ago that you're Yep, done. I've been out since uh, 2015. I did go back for 18 months. Um, on, I got stopped for, uh, I was in Clayton, Washington, and there happened to be a bank robbery in the town that night. Nothing to do with me whatsoever, but they were stopping like anybody, you know, and I was wearing a buddy of mine's jacket and he had an empty baggie in the pocket that had some meth residue in it. And literally put me back in prison for 18 months. To, for that? Just for that. You know, and I'm not a rat, so I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's his, you know what I mean? It, it, but it mattered anyway, but, so, yeah. That, I mean, that's wild. Pretty 18 wild. 18 months for a bag that has some meth residue. And they probably- if, they, if, they, if, if I would've had them test it at trial, they wouldn't even have had enough stuff in there because they tested it yeah. there on the street. To, well, I'm to, so curious. I think about, okay, what if that was me? I borrowed a jacket and I had that, and I don't have a record. Well, that's what changed the law, like a year later, yeah. oh, for that same goddamn thing. Interesting. Like, I've been on, they let people out of prison for that law. They turned, they changed, or turned the law, the possession thing and all that because the lady bought some pants at Goodwill or whatever. Right, yeah, whatever. Now, I've been on the run technically for two years for that same violation on that same charge that I shouldn't even have anymore. Yeah. yeah because yeah. they don't want to take me, they pick and choose, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, uh, so when you're 40, you get out, do you, and you went back for 18 months, sure. Yeah, right, yeah. right. You, were you housed, unhoused? Like, where was your living situation? Uh, you I got out, out and I was supposed to go to this halfway house out in uh, every area off of a, a um, airport road, kind of. And it, the place ended up getting condemned, and the guy ended up going getting sent to prison for collusion and misappropriation of state funds and all this shit. Right, right. And I just kind of slipped between the cracks. I was supposed to get SSI. I, that never happened. I didn't know I had hand. They told me just the other two months ago that it expired. I didn't even know I had it. And then that my uh, my fucking uh, benefits I'm waiting for. I didn't know it like expired. To, I had to put in a new thing, and so then now I'm not getting money, and it's just it's crazy, man. It's just, you know. So you there's kind of this the cracks, like, you know. Yeah, you slip through the cracks and hit, go to the streets. Yeah, I've been on the streets ever since. You know what I mean? I, I finally got like an RV. Okay. But I mean that thing guzzles so much gas and fucking it. You can't. Nobody likes, it. people look at you like you got shit on your face driving into that thing. It's crazy, man. People just have a real, used to be back in the day, you had an RV, you're doing okay, you know what I mean? Now it's like a stigma, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's hard well, it to depends, keep up to. It depends on where the RV is at. If an RV is in a city, it's a stigma. But if you're camping, it's a whole different story. Right. It's, it's like people in tents are like, man, right. I wish I was in an RV. Right. So it just, it, there's a lot of perception going on there. That's crazy. But, well, I mean, I'm glad you got an RV. Yeah, yeah, yeah I am too. You know, on some point of like, because yeah, it's, it's definitely better than, but it, it, it's also kind of a burden at the same time. You know what I mean? Because if all your stuff's in there and it's getting impounded or something like that, or get stolen or fucking, yeah. who the fuck out here? I mean, anything's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it like yes, because it's your home, mobile home, and if it gets towed, there it goes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh man, what's well, been cold? Oh man. How are you staying warm? <laughs> yeah. Lots of blankets. Yeah. And a dog. And your dog, that's right. Yeah. Little heat, little, little heater right oh, there. Oh man, she, yeah, she, <laughs> she, you know, snuggles up between me and my girl, and that's about the, yeah, yeah. She's uh, like, better than an electric blanket. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, any, any kids along the way or anything? No, no kids, man. No kids. Never had kids. No. Uh, your mom's still around? No, my mom passed away in 2018, right when I was going back to prison the second time. Uh, my dad died while I was in prison. Damn, sorry. My grandmother just passed away uh, about two weeks ago. Oh, man, she sorry. She was 93, uh, man, she... It's a good run. Man, she took me and they they took care of me the whole time I was locked up. I mean, all my family did. They were they stood by me the whole time. Wow. I, mean, I was very lucky, very fortunate, yeah. man, very... Yeah. good. You know, like my grandma used to drive two hours every Sunday out to Shelton to the IMU to the lockup unit to visit me for an hour behind glass every Sunday. You That's know what incredible. I mean? Just because, you know, I needed to visit, you know? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? That's some so, support. That's, good. That's some Yeah, yeah, she really, you know, so. Yeah. 
Uh, and your sister? Uh, my sister's doing good. She married uh, her husband. Uh, uh, his, so I guess it would be her father-in-law is one of like the founding CEOs of Delta Dental. So they're doing okay, you know. Yeah, my guess is, yes, they're doing great. <laughs> right, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, she, we talk, you know, uh, you do, we okay. were a lot closer as kids, it's just, you know, she came and picked me up when I got to prison in California, and I just, we just two different lifestyles, you know what I mean? I mean, I love my sister to death, but, you know, I don't want to burden her with my, she's like my, my big little sister, you know what I mean? Because she was out here during all that time, you know, everything, so she kind of is more experienced with the world, I guess you could say, than I am. So it's kind of like role reversal almost, you know what yeah, I mean? It, it, it's really weird, you that know, so, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of similar to like, you know, when your parents are getting older, the kids take care of them. Right. And like, yeah, it's role reversal almost. Yeah. And something like that. It's just that. weird because I feel like I should take care of her. She's my younger sister, you know what I mean? But and it's kind of like, And yeah. maybe you will sometime. You never know. Yeah. I don't know what life's going to bring, right? It's like, it's a wild ride. Yeah, it's who knows right ride. now? Yeah, everything's so fucking crazy in this world at the moment. It's like, who yeah. knows, man? Ian, is there something that you'd want the people of Seattle to know? Man, look out for each other. It's a fucking cold world, man, and we all need help. You know what I mean? It's fucking, uh, don't let the fucking, the, 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 whatever it is, the, 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 uh, people that, uh, you know, are trying to bring us down. You know what I mean? The, the negativity, the, the darkness, just, man, you got to see through it. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Good to hear your voice, your party story, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna grab that little mic. Yeah, I don't want to break it. <laughs>